Okay, thank you all for coming to this focus group. And uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? My name is Cheryl. Hi, I'm Ron. This is my wife, Debbie. Hi. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to play clips of the two candidates who are running for office, and then I'll ask you some questions. So please be open and honest, and let's begin. We need to stop making drug addiction a crime. That means focusing on treatment and economic opportunities so people can build back their lives. The opioid academic. I mean, epa, epa, you, you know, the drug problem. It's bad. People, death. We got to take this dying thing and, and kill it. Kill the dead. What is your impression of the candidates? I like them. And what about her? You know what? I hate her voice. Oh, yeah. I, I hate her voice. Grating. It hurts my ears. Her voice. Hmm. Okay, let's look at another clip. I will work hard on behalf of the people. Sometimes the people, they're wrong. <laughs> yes, she's very shrill. Okay, what about the content of what they're saying? It makes a lot of sense. It's very smart. And her? She comes off as too smart, smug. Yeah, know it all. You know, it's off putting. Yeah, she's what, what, what's the word? Uh, inauthentic. I would say fake. Okay, any other thoughts? I think she's too pretty. I don't think she's pretty enough. You know, she strikes me as one of those ambitious sorts. Well, she is running for office. Should she not run for office? No, that's fine. She just shouldn't want to win. That's too ambitious. Okay, let's look at two more clips. Go to my website where I have 1,000 pages of detailed plans about how I will bring back the middle class. I am so grateful for this opportunity, and I hope that I can earn your vote. You know well and good what I can stand for. Do I have to artichoke? I mean, articulate. You, you know what I'm trying to say. Damn it to hell. Impressions? She's not very likable. There's just something about her. I, I can't put my finger on it. She's flawed. And she rubs people the wrong way. Okay, and are you aware of the allegations against him? That he's touched women inappropriately? That he's literally rubbed people the wrong way? Well, he has been keeping his hands to himself, you know, as of late. And I heard that she had premarital sex, so no one's perfect. I heard she's a hoe. A hoe? How else would she get this far in her career? Okay. Uh, what about the fact that two months ago he had an aneurysm and in the middle of the campaign had to have open brain surgery? Does that concern you? Well, he seems fine now. Oh, I can barely see the scar. The hairpiece really covers it. Okay, and since his near death, he has increased his lead in the polls, and that's because people think he's more likely to win in November, and she is more likely to be attacked. I wonder why they think that, huh, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and it does sound like the three of you are leaning towards voting for him. Yes, he has a controversial record, exhibits gross personal behavior, and went through a recent brain surgery. But on the other hand, she's a woman. He's the far less risky choice. Less risky. Okay. Uh, I'm curious, though. Did you notice that he has some trouble finishing his sentences and even his words? I've noticed that in all his interviews. It, it makes him relatable. He's authentic. That problem he has with his mind, it's very likable. So you have confidence in him? Oh, yeah. He's sharp. Sharp as attack. Yeah, he's... Um... Sharp as attack. A attack that's bent and caked with rust. Honey, what are you talking about? Well, I said he's sharp as attack that's rusted and bent. You know, the kind of attack you throw away. What's wrong with you, Debbie? I'm, I'm voting for her. No! Yeah, come on. She's far superior. And yes, I am bothered by his tripping on his words and by his words. I'm scared he won't finish a sentence and I'm more scared that he will. <laughs> but, but, hun, we've always been in lockstep politically. Oh, Ron, I haven't agreed with you in 30 years. Are you kidding? Mm-mm. 
You never noticed that when you talked about politics, I just nod and don't say a word. I thought you agreed. I agree because I don't want to get divorced. You know how much conflict is created by politics and religion? Wait, wait. Now you're going to tell me that you've never really told me how you feel about religion, too? Oh. I'm an atheist. What? <laughs> but you belong to all the church committees. Oh, I know. I like the social aspect. Oh, well, let's get back to the candidates. Uh, okay, so that's one vote for her and two for him. And Cheryl, do you happen to know which way your husband is leaning? Danny's probably leaning toward his mistress. I'm just saying, as long as we're being so honest up in here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, no, uh, no, take it from me, Debbie. If your marriage is good at all, don't let silly political disagreements tear you apart. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. And that's going to take you voting for the man and not that opportunistic, shrill hoe of a woman. <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, voting for that unlikable lady with the grating voice. Tell her, Cheryl. Tell her? I would feel lucky to be married to such a sensible man. Oh, my. It's one thing to stay silent in a marriage for years and years while your husband drones on and on with his political opinions. But it's another thing to be lectured, Cheryl, by you. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap up this focus group. Thank you so much for your time. Debbie, you ready to mosey? No, not yet. I'm not just voting for her. I'm going to volunteer. Sign me up. Oh, great. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And after this, sweetie, I'm heading over to the church meeting. Woo, who knows? This may be the day that I tell them that I don't believe in God. <laughs> I'm going to find a marriage counselor. Oh, sounds good. Oh, and turn on the crock pot. Love you. When did you start smoking? Oh, my life. Oh, I could learn to like this. Tata wrong. <laughs>